Welcome to Quantum Revenue Expansion, where we keep you motivated, inspired, and thinking big. Up-leveling into quantum revenue is a choice that we can all make in any moment and then continue to make that choice to stay in that space each day. On this podcast, Ursula will share revenue growth strategies to reach your next level and introduce you to CEOs just like you who are making it happen. What's your next quantum leap going to be? See it, own it, and take that first step. If this is you, then Ursula wants to invite you to join us at the next 2X Intensive now. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. You're listening to Quantum Revenue Expansion with your host, Ursula Menchez. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Quantum Revenue Expansion, where we focus on making your annual income your monthly income, because why wouldn't that be fun? Super excited to be back with you. Thank you so much for all of the positive emails and messages. And I'm glad you're liking this conversation about scaling your business because we're going to keep it rolling and really scaling from a quantum perspective of how to get there faster and easier. And today I'm going to talk about the idea that discipline matters more than hard work when it comes to scaling your business. Discipline matters. Yeah, discipline more than hard work when it comes to scaling your business. And I feel like this is one, this is one where there's this, what would I say? Like this fine balance between discipline and work and how do we as CEOs find that balance? And it was inspired because (laughs) recently I was out building, not building, I was out scooping snow on our lake to make an ice rink. And it's a pretty good sized ice rink. You know, when I do things, I like to do them big. And I thought about hiring someone to do it. And I was like, I could totally do this. And, and it would be a great workout. And our son could help me do it. So that, that was the whole idea. But four and a half hours later, <laughs> I had some blisters on my hands. I was pretty sore. I was tired. But the ice rink was cleared. And later, my husband was telling me how much snow I had actually moved. And it was it was a lot more than I thought. And I'm actually glad I didn't know how hard it was going to be when I first started, right? I'm glad I didn't know because I might not have completed the project. And isn't that the truth when it comes to our businesses? Like if you would have known, if you would have known how hard it was going to be to grow your business, if you would have known how hard it was going to be to hire your first team member, or maybe you haven't hired yet and you're thinking about it, or to close the first big ticket sale or the first sale or to um, add systems and processes to your team or any of those things. Like if you would have known how hard that was going to be, you might not have done it. And it's the reason why, you know, not everyone is a business owner. Not everyone's a CEO because it does take an enormous amount of work and brain focus and, you know, just constant, like thinking about your business and being in the business And you have to love it or you won't keep doing it, right? You have to love what you're doing in business or you will stop. So I assume that if you're listening to this, you've probably had your business for a little while and you're in it to keep going, right? You're in it for it to be a success. And so hats off to you. Congratulations, because you've just come through two of the most difficult years of the the pandemic in terms of keeping a business going and growing it. So you're here. So, you know, all of us pat on the back as business owners, we're doing it. And now it's like, all right, made it through the pandemic, maybe even thrived. Like some of our clients had their best years ever in business. Maybe you're, you know, thinking I I, I want things to be better, or I hope this is my breakthrough year. Well, you're in the right place because that's what we're going to talk about today. Really, you know, how you can be disciplined in your business without it feeling like tons of hard work. And again, I'm not saying like sometimes you're not working hard. There are times when I work really hard in my business for, you know, maybe a short amount of time to put things in place or to be disciplined. And then, you know, I kind of pull back from the business and let it run itself. And then I kind of inspect and see what's working and not working. And then I go back in, but I'm not constantly doing the heavy lifting or the hard work or the business couldn't grow. And so we're going to be digging into that today. Quick thing, if you haven't yet, definitely go to UrsulaInc.co and download our Quantum Revenue Expansion Masterclass. It's on the homepage, really easy to find. I just had someone go through it and they were telling me how 
inspirational and motivational it was and how it really helped them look at how their six figure business has been going and figure out how to uh, expand it to that next level. If you want to hang out with me live, we have an event coming up called scale to seven, the scale to seven experience. And it's literally scale, the number two, the number seven.com scale to seven.com. We'll put it in the show notes as well. It's coming up um, soon, February 20, uh, sorry, February 24th. And that's like, you know, probably by the time you're listening to this, like a week, a little over a week out. So check with us. Um, We're limiting it to 20 CEOs, 20 CEOs who are ready to scale from six to seven figures. It's free. It's two hours with me and with Rebecca. And we're going to focus on two power strategies. The first one being focusing on, you know, really what your revenue model needs to look like for you to scale to multi six or seven figures. And then the second part, part two, we're going to be looking at what are your biggest blocks to scaling right now? Like what's that number one block that's keeping you stuck at this income ceiling? We all have one or we be at the next level already. So we help you, we're going to help you uncover that as well. So that's the depth of the work we're going to do allows us to only have 20 people there. If you feel the pull, go to scale to seven.com. Definitely get registered. We'd love to hang out with you there. All right. So today, today, we're, you know, we're going to talk about this because Rebecca, master coach at sales coach now and myself, we've been leading a lot of training sessions and coaching sessions. And between the two of us, we've coached thousands, (laughs) coached and trained thousands of business owners on breaking through to that next level and really figuring out what it's going to take to scale. And so we're often in these conversations and lately like lately, the theme has been coming up of discipline versus hard work, discipline versus hard work. And what does that, you know, what does that really look like in, in a business? And so I wanted to give you some tangible pieces today. I was actually thinking about, you know, one of our clients who has pretty successfully grown a business to about 300,000 and, you know, has done a great job doing that. However, they have hit an income ceiling they're on track to hit seven figures. Like they're like the quantum revenue model for them shows that they could get to seven figures. However, our client won't be able to get there if they don't get out from under the doing, like literally doing almost everything in the business, which to me, who I love to delegate. So it's an amazing feat to be able to grow a business to 300,000 in annual revenue by yourself. Like, I think that's just amazing and super profitable but they're working all the time. So you talk about hard work, like that's just being in it all the time. And so in this, this client example really is every client in so many ways in different levels, right? So many of our clients show up, they have a team or they have a small team. They know they need to hire, or they know that the team that got them here is not going to get them where they want to go, which is often really depressing because definitely have been there. And especially if you love your team, like I love my team. I've loved all of my team members throughout the years. And, you know, that some have come for a long time. Some have you know come for just a little while, but it's always been like, they've always brought something amazing to my company to help me grow. And so it can be a bummer when you realize, oh my gosh, this isn't the person that's going to, this isn't the team. This isn't the person. At the same time, once you know that, like once you know that, like you got to make a change, you just do because your company has stagnated. So pay attention to that. Like really, really notice that. I, I was talking with some friends recently and one of the things they said to me was you're so disciplined. And we were talking about working out. I don't love to go to the gym. Let's be honest. I don't know a lot of people that are like, oh my gosh, I love to go to the gym. Maybe there's a few of you, not a lot, right? I love the part where I'm done at the gym, right? Where my workout is complete. I go down to the little cafe, I hang out. uh, I work on something. A lot of times I'll do some work really early in the morning on things that I can't focus on during the day, like writing or sales copy or something like that. So I, I love the end result. My commitment to myself is to go a minimum of three times a week. If I can go four times, that feels like rock star status. And that like, I celebrate that. If I go three times, I feel really good. And I kind of go every other day. And in between there, I might get some other exercise with our son or, you know, whatever. But, and it's on my calendar. 
Like people ask me like, how do you stay disciplined? And I think, well, I put exercise on my calendar. It is a date with myself. I am committed. I am showing up. If it's not on my calendar, it probably won't happen. Right. And so part of, part of my discipline is making sure that, you know, what I want to create, there's a system or a process for it so that it gets scheduled or it gets on the calendar, which we'll talk about now. I, as I was thinking about this though, it's like, where did I, where did I learn to be disciplined? Where did I learn the value of quote unquote, you know, hard work? I grew up on a farm, which a lot of you know, and you, I mean, you could, but you, you almost can't not grow up on a farm and learn the value of discipline and hard work because you are in it every single day. And when I look back, like I did work really hard. Like for me, hard work on the farm was baling hay. That was probably one of my least favorite things because in the summertime, it's really hot. It has to be really hot to bale hay because the hail has the, you know, the hay has to be dry. If it's not dry, you can't bale it. So inevitably, you know, uh, it would be probably a hundred and some degrees out, just super hot. We'd be bailing, you know, you'd bale, you'd stack it up, you'd take it home and then you'd stack it under a hot tin roof. And for some reason, I feel like I ended up probably because I wasn't as strong, like, you know, I was, I had older brothers and I wasn't as strong as them yet to be able to throw the bales from the wagon into the barn. Like that took some strength. And you also didn't want to fall down because the, the hay wagon or straw, depending on what we were bailing was really tall. And often there was like a one or one and a half foot gap between the edge of the hay or straw and the door in which you were pushing it through. And so my brothers were really good. And my dad were really good at throwing it pretty accurately and not stepping too close. I would have had to get really close to the edge of the, edge of the wagon to be able to get, you know, push it in and I could have fallen. So it was probably better that I was inside, but being inside was the worst, right? To me, that was hard work. So it's a hundred degrees outside. So you can imagine that it's 110, 120. I don't even know, probably 120 degrees or more. Now, if you live in Phoenix or Arizona, right, you know what heat is like, but we were working under a hot tin roof. And if you've done this, you know, like probably the worst, it wasn't fun. It was sweaty. It was stinky. Definitely a great workout. Like I, you know, I felt cleansed afterwards because you were sweating so much, but that was hard work. Cleaning manure in animal pens, also hard work. Not my favorite thing. Um, uh, hoeing beans uh, and weeding, not my favorite thing. Cause it was, you had to do it when it was hot and sunny and you'd be out there like, you know, with gloves on pulling thistles. And, you know, I will say this though, I always got a lot of really good thinking done when I was doing those kinds of things. So that to me was hard work. That was the labor that went into making the farm successful, but it wasn't what made the farm successful. Like we lived off the farm. So to me, that was success. Like we made enough money to eat and we raised things to eat and we could live and we had a house and, you know, so it was a successful farm and it was successful because my dad was disciplined in, you know, planting the seeds in the fields on time. My dad was very disciplined when it came to his animals and, you know, making sure you know, the calves were born at the right time or the pigs or whatever. There was a schedule. He had a calendar and he, he had it mapped out. I mean, when I think about this, I know he reverse engineered his year every year so that the farm could be successful. And while this seems like a small thing, this was, this was discipline, right? Because you had to be out there planning and then implementing every single day, the right pieces so that the crops would grow, the animals would be born, and this, you know, this whole cycle of life could happen. And I didn't real, you know, I didn't know that when I was a kid. I wasn't like, oh, look, my dad's so disciplined. So, you know, but I grew up with that. It was very ingrained in my head that what you what you sowed, like what you planted, you would reap the benefits and the harvest of that later. So there was this also this idea of delayed gratification from growing up on the farm, right? Because you plant a garden and then you have to wait and wait and wait and wait. And I loved eating fresh tomatoes, but I'd have to wait and wait and wait and wait. But I learned that by planting seeds, you know, I would be able to eat these fresh tomatoes in a few months. So 
I hope you're seeing like this different, the difference truly between discipline and the, the definition of discipline is to, um, to train in self-control or obedience, to train in self-control or obedience, which is really, you know, what, what we did on the farm. We were very controlled and when things were planted and when things happened so that we could reap the benefits of that. This is the same in your business, right? I, I'm sure you've heard this before, but whatever, whatever results you're reaping in your business right now in terms of sales is what you were doing 90 days ago for the most part. It usually follows like a 90 day train of what I did 90 days ago, I'm getting the benefit of now. What, what you're doing today in marketing, you will reap the benefit of that in 60 to 90 days. And that's you know how you keep your pipeline full. So big picture, anyone can be disciplined. This isn't like, just because I grew up on a farm and you know I got to see it in action, I got to live it. Yeah, it was helpful for me. A lot of people that didn't grow up on farms who are very disciplined and or learn to be disciplined. And, and again, it doesn't mean you're disciplined in every area of your life, right? Like there are some things that just aren't as important to me. So I'm not as disciplined in those areas, but it's really about becoming disciplined in key areas and focusing on those things that will move your business forward. Brian Tracy in his book, Eat That Frog, called those things frogs, right? Do the frogs first, eat the frogs first, meaning if you don't like making sales calls, make the sales calls first thing in the morning. Like whatever you don't like doing, get it done first because it moves your business forward. One of my coaches called them needle movers, which I love. Those are the things that move your business forward, move the needle forward in your business. And this is why you as a CEO need to focus on the core things that move the business forward and have the team and systems around you to focus on the other pieces of it and move the other pieces forward. If you don't have team yet, yeah, you're doing all of it, but it's a reason I wanna encourage you to think about adding that first team member to take some of that pressure off because it will just, it'll make a, such a big difference. I think we need to do a whole show on hiring though because I, I know so many people struggle with hiring and hiring that first person is like a nightmare. And, you know, you don't know how to do it. You don't know who to trust or just a lot of limiting beliefs about it. So I'm thinking um, if that might be helpful, definitely send me a message or email me and let me know. So let's break it down. I want you to really think about key areas in your business and what your needle movers are. And this might be a great place for you to get about a pen and some paper to just, just take some notes. Looking at, you know, where, where does everything begin? For me, I spend a lot of time thinking about marketing because here's the thing, no marketing, no prospects, no sales, your business doesn't move forward. So it's pretty critical, right? I'm assuming you think about marketing a lot. When we work with our clients in the, in the area of marketing, we ask them to focus on three areas. What are the three key areas of marketing that you are being consistent and we'll use the word disciplined with? In other words, if you do a podcast, that's marketing, right? I do my podcast once a week. Some people do it five days a week. I'm amazed by them. <laughs> but you got to pick like whatever you're going to do and then do it consistently. This is where I see a lot of CEOs get pulled away, distracted, you know, shiny object syndrome. You get pulled away from the things that move your business forward. And then you wonder why you don't have a full pipeline. So pick three areas of marketing and be consistent with them. I can share in our business. So we have the podcast, which we're hanging out on now. We have uh, a we have emails that we send out. We do a monthly e-zine, which I've been doing since it was called a newsletter. And for over 15 years, we've been sending this out. That goes out once a month, right? We're disciplined about it. We get it done. We get it out. We also, um, I do a lot of speaking or a free event. We do at least one or two free events every quarter, if not more often. We're very disciplined about that. We have a 2X intensive course that we offer six to eight times a year, depending on how many clients we can take in. We're very disciplined. It's already on the calendar. Where do you need to be disciplined in your marketing? And, and what three ways could you market consistently? And I mean, like get it on your calendar and for the next year, do, do it. And also let's be clear though. I want you measuring and inspecting the results you get to make sure the marketing is working, right? So it might not be working the first 60 days, maybe it starts working at 90 days. You want to also be checking on that. Next, we have your marketing and then sales. What's your sales 
process and how can you be disciplined about it? So give an example, back in the day when I was selling technology sales and training, technology training and consulting, I knew that I needed 10 appointments a week with decision makers to reach my financial goal. And actually 10 was you know, a stretch, but I knew if I had 10 uh, or close to 10, eight to 10, I would easily reach my goal. So I shot over, right? And then I made sure that I kept, I kept that doing that and I did it consistently. And it's one of the reasons my sales skyrocketed. I even would open up appointment times on my calendar so that I would know what was open, what had to be filled. When I did that, my sales skyrocketed. If you have events, how many events do you need? How many people do you need at your event? How can you make it consistent on your calendar to get the results you want? So whatever you have to do, it's the same thing. Open up the spots or create the events in order to reach your goal on a consistent and regular basis, okay? Next, your team. How are you gonna be disciplined with your team? How do you support them? Do you meet with them every week? In the world of sales, when I was a sales manager, we had a weekly sales meeting. It was at the same time every week. No one could miss it. I didn't, I, I was very, very strict about this. It's like, I don't care if it's the most important meeting in the world in terms of a client meeting. It doesn't go during the sales meeting. That's more important. And if you can't schedule around that, there's something going on. So it was required. It wasn't an option. We have regular team meetings at my company now. It's required. It's not an option, right? So you have to be able to lead your team by having regular meetings with them. Put those meetings on the calendar. Be disciplined about that. Finances. You want to be getting your numbers completed every month. Do you have a bookkeeper? Do you have a CPA? Maybe you have a CFO, depending on the size of your company. Are you getting regular monthly financial reports? If you're not, this is an area that you want to be definitely be disciplined in. And it's not an area that I've always, always been disciplined in. I mean, there are times when I get my numbers a couple months later and it's like, that's not okay, right? So getting regular numbers, revenue report out, you know, your PL is critical to the success of your business and getting it consistently. And then finally, systems and operations. Where are you being consistent as a company in terms of your systems, your operations, and how your company is running? One of the things that we do with our clients is something called walk the sale. And this is something that Rebecca has brought to our clients where you look at from a systems and operations perspective, what happens from the moment an order or a sale comes in all the way to when that customer or client is completed with you. And it's so powerful to walk the sale from here to here and to write down everything that needs to happen to ensure a high level customer experience. You will learn so much from that process. If you've never done it, definitely do it. Do it with your team members if you have team members because it will, it will show you where things might be falling down right now, where things need to shift. And that allows you to be super disciplined in that process. When I see things falling apart in my company, it's like, what, either why don't we have a system for that or what about that system isn't working? And we'll go in and we'll, we'll fix it because it's an indication and nothing drives me crazier than, you know, if somebody's not getting something they need, like one of our clients can't find something. It's like, no, this needs to be clear. This needs to be easy. So walking the sale can be a great way to do that. All right. Again, we started with this idea of how important discipline is. Discipline matters more than hard work because it lays the foundation for you to reach your quantum revenue goal. When you start with your stretch goal and then you look at, you know, marketing, sales, team, finance, operation, all the areas of your business that, that need to have key aspects in place and where you can put even more discipline in, your company will start to grow. You'll grow faster. And so I just want to encourage you to really look at that. Where am I being really disciplined in my business? Where could we be even more disciplined? All right, so hopefully this was useful in your journey to scaling your business to multi six or seven figures. Just remember, if you wanna hang out with us at scale to seven and really look at what, it's, what it could take like to have this multi six, seven, multi seven figure business that you've been dreaming about, go to scale, the number two, the number seven, scale to seven.com, get registered and we'll be hanging out for two hours. I can't wait. I'm so excited about that event. I can't wait. All right, everybody. That's it for today.
have a rocking week and make it your best month yet. Thank you for joining us today. And if you are ready to make your next quantum leap, let's do it. Ursula invites you to join us at the 2X Intensive. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. Don't forget to leave us a review on your favorite podcast app.